Talk about a rugged expedition? We're heading to wild and woolly Mongolia to chase after the biggest of all the wild sheep, the Altai Argali. High altitude, weather that changes by the hour, the home of the Gur, hunting eagles, red stags. Hold on to your hats. Here we go. Presented by Global Rescue. There when you need them most. The Altai Mountains are high altitude, windswept, rolling grasslands that are broken up by jagged cliffs and steep canyons where local domestic sheep and goat herders try and scratch out a living. This remote, desolate terrain is home to the largest of all the wild sheep of the world, the Altai Argali. Very few hunting permits for Altai Argali are issued each year by the Mongolian government. But the revenue generated by these permits goes a long, long way to providing a successful, sustainable use conservation model that has allowed this tremendous species to thrive. Before heading out on the hunt, we made a plan with our local guides to do a little sightseeing around the capital city of Ulaanbaatar. There's lots of different things to see in this exotic destination. How is this? It's a young one? Young. I think he's gonna peck my hand off if I pet him. Oh. Oh, ice. Ice is different. What are you doing, Alan? I'm gonna pick this son of a bitch up, so. Yeah. Nice. Shake them off. Nice. Shake it, shake it. Wash it. Look whose name's on here, huh? Trying the local cuisine is always an adventure, no matter where you go. Just getting to camp was an adventure in itself. We were told by the outfitter that a pack of horses and some Mongolian cowboys were gonna meet us at the base of the mountain and they'd help haul our gear up to the top where we were gonna have a camp ready. Well, that didn't quite happen as planned, so the guys decided to try and take the vehicles up the mountain. The fresh rain made the driving even more treacherous than it already was going up through all these rocks. We're so close. The camp that they set up is just up on this next ridge, but we've come up to this valley and now we've gotten to this point. And it looks like it's grassy and you could kind of drive through it, but it's not. It's all these loose rocks, plus it's been raining, so it's slick now. And the vehicle that was leading us was a small, one of those Russian Jeeps, and it can go in a lot of places that this vehicle can't. So we'll get out of here though, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Finally, a few ponies showed up just before we got up to the top to help take our gear the rest of the way up there to where there would be a camp all set up and waiting for us. 
I never thought I'd love a coat so much as I do right now. It's about 30 degrees. We come up from where we left the truck. We couldn't get it any closer, so we used the horses to bring the camp up. And now we're just setting it all up right out here. We've got sheep over that rise, and they said there's some sheep over here as well. So fingers crossed that they're still here tomorrow. We'll get a good camp set up, and I think it's going to be a little chilly tonight since we've already got snow on the ground, and it's only 7.30, so. But this is why we love mountain hunting. I don't know what the temperature is, but it falls under that freaking cold temperature range. It's a little colder than we had planned on, but it's great for the sheep hunting. It's pushed them down into this big table mountain that we're on. So, all we can hope for is that once this sun comes up, they're up and wandering around trying to feed and warm up just like we will be. Mongolian food is good, but it's pretty basic. So it was a real treat to sneak off and get a little freeze-dried food in my belly. Oh yeah, I get a little honey hole down here out of the wind. Oh yeah. You glass and you glass, then you glass some more. Sheep hunting gig is all about spending time glassing and trying to get the right setup. Just because you see them doesn't mean you can necessarily get to them. You got canyons in the way and you've got problems with the wind so you can't go this direction because there's a canyon that's not passable over there. You can't go that way because they'll get a wind so sometimes you just got to be patient. Wow what a change this morning. We woke up to all this snow. You could hear it hitting the tent last night but I didn't expect this much. As dry of an area as this is this is good news for the grass and the sheep long term, but it's going to be a little rough walk and it's really difficult in these stones to find your way through it when we're hiking on this hillside. And now we've got to fight this snow, but it is what it is. We might move the camp. We're not really sure yet. We've got to get out there, get this fog to lift so that we can start glassing some sheep and see what's going to go on. But this is just part of the adventure in Mongolia. Here we are at 10,500 feet. One minute it's sunny, the next minute it's raining, the next minute it's blowing hard, next minute it's sunny again, who knows. While we were hiking from one ridge to another, we stumbled into a couple of red stags that were hiding down in the rocks, trying to stay out of the wind. Since I had a license in my pocket for a red stag, I figured, hey, let's try and sneak in, get a little closer, and get a good look at the one, because the one looks like he's not too bad.
five yards from the bulls. I didn't even see that third one, that little one. That one was, you know, he's not bad, but on day one, no way. You know, hope for something a little bit bigger, maybe a little bigger in the backs. His fronts were good, and he had decent mass, but he's not the one we're here for, not on day one. <laughs> How awesome was that? Catching him in the bed like that? Yes. That's what we call doing the old sneaky sneak. We moved our camp down to this set of huts down here. This is a place where the sheep herders stay in the winter. They bring their flocks in here. So they got a little building here that has some supplies in it. And then we've got a nice area in there. At least it's gonna be warmer than up at the top of the mountain. And this is where we're staying here. It's nice, we got a table to cook on. This is where we slept last night, right underneath this carpet. The mattress was a little bit stiff, <laughs> to put it mildly, but it worked and it was better than staying on the side of the mountain. So we were happy campers when we got to this place. And that thing worked out pretty good. We left our clothes on, bundled up in the carpet. It was good. Sometimes you gotta rough it, you know, part of the deal, but at least we were indoors, dry, and semi-warm. You can't complain about that. spotted a group of sheep. There's four rams together, so it's gonna be tough to find a place where we can get a good look at them and not spook them. So we just gotta ease across this opening here, this flat plain. Let's see if you can see them up there in the shade. They're nice and calm and bedded down for a while, so that's good. We're being picky on this trip, and the guides are telling me none of these rams is quite mm -hmm. big enough. It's the front one on the left. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't wait to see what a big one looks like. So we're gonna go look for another one. Only in Mongolia do you pass up 58, 59 inch sheep. sheep we see up here one of the guys spotted it so the game plan is we're gonna try and take some of these Mongolian ponies up this steep hill cut across the top behind this ridge line so we can come down on top of this sheep and get a better look at him he's a he looks like a really good one but we gotta get above him and get on the other side because this wind is going right up this valley right to him so the easy thing, of course, would be to walk right at him, but that's not gonna work. And there's no cover except for a few boulders, so if we can get above him and then come down, we've got a much better chance. So these Mongolian ponies are the toughest horses that there are. <laughs> as tough as it might be riding these Mongolian ponies, I'll tell you this, this beats first class walking every single day, especially in these mountains. We would be 10% of the way up right now and dying. But luckily, we got old Trigger here, or however you say that in Mongolian. Trigero. Now that's Spanish. What would Mongolian be? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take these hobbles off and put them on the horses so we can climb up here for this last bit and see if we can find our ram. Things are good, they can only go so far with these things on, which makes it nice that when we come back and get them, they're somewhere in this county.
dead ear here. Nice he didn't fall and roll, huh? Look at that mass. You know, there's probably no more exotic place to come hunting than Mongolia. The tradition, the history that's here, and of course the home of the biggest sheep in the whole world. It's really a, a dream come true to get to come and hunt these kinds of animals right here in their native habitat and to get an old ram. I mean, this is exactly what you come here for. Great mass, broomed off out here. He probably came out here a couple years ago till fighting, you know, knocked him off. But you want to take these old solitary rams like this. This is the kind that he's done breeding. It's good for conservation. All the money goes for a good cause with these. Helps to protect them out here in this area. The locals leave them alone. They know there's a payday if somebody comes along and takes one of the few that are allowed every year. I feel really honored to get to be here, allowing us to hunt with them and collect this fabulous trophy. Who knows, maybe we'll get to do it again someday. At the end of the day, do I wish we would have taken one of the bigger rams we'd seen earlier in the hunt? Of course I do. But you know, that's hunting. Sometimes you make decisions that you regret at the end, but still, what a great adventure Mongolia was.